Hey everybody, Dara really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color X Malice along IG Yanagi's route. I'm just going to head right into this because even though it's the very beginning of chapter 2, we're in the middle of hearing the collar talk to us. So let's finish the conversation with the person behind the collar. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. We believe our message was clear. If you have her stand idly by after she's expressed her intent to seek X day's truth, we will have no further use for her. We're sure you understand the implications. <laughs> You'll take her life. You knew how we would react, so you told her your true intentions. Are we wrong, Aiji Yanagi? You used her under the pretext that you wanted to keep her out of danger. And won't we'll deny that. Yanagi showed no signs of wavering. He merely nodded quietly, agreeing with the voice from the caller. It's true I wanted to distance her from the investigation, but I'm also aware it'd be tough to reconcile that with your demands. Still, it's risky to involve her too much. If the caller's discovered by the police, Hoshino's life will be in danger. If the police got their hands on such a valuable clue, you toss her aside in an instant, correct? You want us to investigate without the cops. You give us these vague demands. A life is at stake, so we must act cautiously. So I figured I'd just ask you point blank. What should we do with her? What should we let her do and see? Why did you allow us to know about the collar? The answer is simple. We wanted to see how she would act. But there was a problem. She would have difficulty uncovering the truth of X Day on her own. So, we introduced you. We entrusted her with you. So, you're saying it's fine if we uncover the whole truth about X-Day? But of course. Didn't they actually say they wanted them to? Then, I just have one question. I understand that all of your targets until now have been targets of vengeance. They committed sins outside the scope of law. Crimes that the police wouldn't prosecute. You took judgment into your own hands. Is the rebirth that Adonis seeks the reformation of Japanese law? What do you plan to do with that information? I don't know the scale of Adonis' organization, but it isn't easy to change the course of a nation. Changes like that begin with a revolt, insurrection. It always creates more victims. Is that what you truly seek? Yanagi's tone didn't seem to be critical of Adonis. He was earnestly questioning this person who might be the ringleader of the terrorists. I don't think you, I don't think Adonis would do all this just as a distraction. To me, you seem like people move to action by anger and hatred, and the sorrow that births both. Then you understand. Do you really think the purging society of unpunished sinners will lead to true peace? What is the end game if you kill everyone who has ever hurt someone else? Hatred leads to more hate. Sorrow breeds sorrow, and that just causes more of the crimes you loathe. Hatred can never disappear, nor will sin. You'll just be running in circles. From society's perspective, your standards are vague, and they don't see the significance. All they can see is indiscriminate murder. You're viewed as self-righteous terrorists. That's how history will see you. He was negative, but he wasn't chiding him. It also didn't feel like he was trying to provoke them into revealing information. It seemed like he wanted to win them over. Or maybe more like debating with them. <laughs> you are correct. There is some truth to that, Aiji Yonagi. However, we find nothing you say to be particularly persuasive, especially coming from you. What? Yonagi glared at the collar. Do you feel that way because you don't want those you've hurt to exact vengeance on you? Do you really think you understand the suffering of those you have wronged? Uh. There is no way to heal the wounds of victims. No matter what, we will obstruct current laws. Crimes worthy of capital punishment are reduced to psych exams and plea bargains, down to the weak compromise of life imprisonment. Why would we accept this without question? We choose to fulfill our earnest ideals. Are you saying that our wish is wrong? I. Yanagi clenched his fists. Their argument did have some merit to it, 
The law couldn't completely heal the victims. That's true, but... I found it a little odd that Yanagi had been so badly shaken by the retort. But right now, more importantly, that's why your way of doing things is wrong. I had to let the people behind this collar know just how I really felt. Are you trying to tell me to study the vagueness of the law and protect impotence? I'll learn about them anyway as I pursue the X-Day cases, won't I? I'm sure that I'll learn things to make me want to believe that the police are wrong. But even so, I still can't acknowledge what your group has done as delivering justice. You may want to purge all criminals from the nation, but your own actions have victimized people guilty of nothing at all and have caused them devastating sorrow as well. Copycat crimes have emerged and order has deteriorated due to the quarantine. Many kids don't feel safe enough to even attend school. Are you going to ignore their pain? Will you dismiss them as a necessary sacrifice? That makes you exactly the same as the police. You're like a law that doesn't save victims. Are you really fine with that? <laughs> no immediate agreement or repost came. Yanagi also kept quiet. For a while, silence enveloped the rooftop. I felt like the speaker on the other side was thinking about something. Indeed, it is an inevitable cost of the rebirth. After a short pause, the caller replied. It was a monotone voice devoid of emotion. Then, no matter what, I will never be one of your so-called sympathizers. They held the pain of victims on high, yet never accounted for the pain they'd caused. I couldn't sympathize with people who touted justice only when it served them. We'll see about that. Huh? We look forward to seeing if you hold true once you discover I.G. and Nagi's sins. To learn more, please continue to investigate the x -day cases. Wait! They appeared to be ending the conversation. Sensing this, I raised my voice. Um... Who are you? Who are you? Like they're going to answer. To be honest, I didn't actually expect to get a straight answer. There's no way they would tell me something they've been hiding so diligently. Still, I couldn't help but ask. Well, they actually answered. When you empathize with your sense of justice. My sense of justice? We know of your potential, even if you yourself are unaware of it. Though we may be far apart for now, we expect to see great things from you. One day, we will come for you. Huh? Wait, what's that supposed to mean? The voice cut off while I was in a daze. No further response came from the caller. Yanagi and I stood stock still for a while, just eyeing the caller which had ceased communication. The awkward silence continued for a while. Sorry. Yanagi was the first to break the silence. No, don't worry about it. You intended that conversation to be heard, right? Yeah. But even knowing it would incite a response from the caller, you didn't lie, did you? To me, Yanagi seemed genuinely troubled over how he should treat me as part of the team. So he had given me a straight answer to also provoke the person listening to the caller. You were just making use of the situation since I came to find you, right? That's true, but... Yanagi was not a liar. He was someone who could grasp a situation right away without getting flustered. That's why I felt like I could trust him. I was happy to hear that. Even though he had used the collar because he knew someone was listening, he had put me right in the eye of the storm. He'd allowed me to help on the investigation, even though he was reluctant to means he had faith in me. I'll investigate X-Day for my own sake. I'm the one who's wearing the collar after all. I can't pretend it's someone else's problem. I don't want to let it go like that. So, if you think I can be of use, then use me. I'm glad to be of service. All right. Yanagi sighed. Perhaps I had gotten through to him, or perhaps he had just given up. <laughs> Have I nagged him enough now? December 9th, 2 a.m. Later that night... Ugh. I had a dream. It was a dreary, suffocating nightmare. Help! Help! Please, help me! 
It rang out incessantly, a sharp sound and a bitter cry. Gah, for forgive me. Was that what people called killing intent? A piercing cold stabbed in my body. Yet, I felt the blazing heat. Gah, no more. Please, stop. Stop. Stop it! Isn't this Yanagi's dream? It was terrifying. The sounds of someone being beaten and the faint screams of a man. Stop it! I cried out in my heart. <laughs> With a start, I leapt to my feet. That's when I realized I'd just been dreaming. I inhaled deeply to calm my ragged breathing. That dream again. It was a nightmare that recurred sometimes. It especially appeared when I was very tired. Ah, oh, so... Apparently, Yanagi beat somebody to death in my presence at some point. Or that's what I'm guessing, sorry. I couldn't remember when I first started to have this dream. I must be tired. Anyway, it had woken me up. I didn't much feel like going back to sleep. <sighs> Still... I lay back down on my bed and did my best to fall asleep again. That's when the events of several hours ago reappeared in my mind. However, we find nothing you say to be particularly persuasive, especially coming from you. What? Do you feel that way because you don't want those you've hurt to exact vengeance on you? Do you really think you understand the suffering of those you've wronged? I wonder what happened in Yanagi's past. We had parted ways right after that. I was curious, but I didn't press the issue. Even though I had reflected on each thing the caller had said, it all still baffled me. They empathized with my sense of justice? My idea of justice couldn't align with theirs. I was happy to be useful to someone and to help those around me. That was justice to me. That's why I wanted to catch these criminals. I guess it did make me feel rage toward those robbing the public of their lives. Is that what they empathize with? Still, I never entertained the thought of killing for revenge. It was unacceptable. I don't get this at all. I went over and over it in my head, but I came up empty in my search for answers. I took a deep breath and tried once again to go back to sleep. Huh? There was a noise from the front door. Then I heard the door shut. Kazuki, is that you? Kazuki? His shoes aren't here. I told him not to go out so late. It looked like he had just gone out. Where did he go? Maybe he was going to Akito's. I didn't know their phone number, though. With no idea where Kazuki could have gone, I peeked into his room for a clue. Huh? Looking around this disorganized room, I realized that something was missing. What is guitar? Yep, I was right. His guitar is gone. So, he had taken his guitar with him at this hour? Anyway, I should go after him. Well, I guess I could walk in there and make sure he gets there safely. With my mind made up, I went back into my room to change. I don't know if you can catch up to him at this point. Oh, calling him, okay. No reply, huh? I tried calling him, but it wasn't working. I couldn't get through to Kazuki. He's probably ignoring me. Kazuki didn't like me. Even if he did notice my call, he'd probably just ignore it once he saw my number. But a murder just happened yesterday. Anxiously, I sped up my pace. I might still be able to catch up to him. You don't even know where he went. Uh, there he is. Somehow we found him. When I turned the corner, I saw Kazuki's back. I sprinted to close the distance, and then I stopped. If I catch up to him now, he definitely wouldn't let me take him back home. Even if I was lucky enough to do that, he'd just immediately disappear on me again. There's no point in coming all the way out here if I don't find out where he's going or what he's doing. Ah, so we'll once again try to ninja it. Let's see if it actually works for once. I kept my distance from Kazuki and pondered the situation. 
I've been overlooking it so far, but... Kazuki's words yesterday made an impact on me. Even my brother was plagued by uncertainty about the future. As long as Shinjuku was in this state, there was no guarantee that he wouldn't get targeted by one of the incidents. But Kazuki doesn't even listen to anything I tell him regardless. As I tried to calm myself down, I thought of Yanagi's face. That's right. If I were Yanagi, I'd... Ask for help, huh? Really? He might be sleeping right now. I would feel really bad if I ended up waking him up. But when I assessed the situation, I didn't think I could handle it alone. Yeah, because I can never ever follow anybody. I felt that I should call for backup first. Rationalizing it to myself, I sent a text. Sorry to bother you at this hour, but my brother snuck out of the house. I'm tailing him. I don't think I'll be able to bring him back myself. So, if you're still awake, could you please lend me a hand? My phone vibrated after I sent the message. Where are you now? So, he went inside. Is that a concert venue? Yanagi peeked out from the shadow of the building, whispering as he checked its sign. He'd seen my texts and hurried over immediately. I couldn't be more grateful to him. I'm sorry, you must be busy. I didn't want to make you come all this way. It's all right. I reached a point in my work where it was okay for me to take a break. Yanagi chuckled softly at the way I was squirming apologetically. Seriously, don't worry about it. I'd rather be helping you than having you run off somewhere random on your own. Besides, I'm worried about you when you're out this late. Thanks. I was a police officer, so I felt pathetic. But I felt this wouldn't go well if I didn't have backup. About Kazuki, my brother, I'm really not sure how I should treat him in a lot of situations recently. Um, I can't really say that we get along, but I'm worried about him. I see. So that's why you asked for my help. Yanagi nodded in understanding. I'm sure that he thinks I'm weird for begging for help just because my brother snuck out at night. I might just be worrying too much. I did consider that I might be overreacting because Kazuki and I weren't getting along. You said he took his guitar with him, right? So he's probably practicing or something. Does your brother play a lot at shows? Uh, no. I've never heard him talk about any concerts. But I think he has an interest in music. He has a lot of CDs in his room, and I think he enjoys playing the guitar. But that's pretty much all I know. I see. Anyway, we can't just allow a minor to be going somewhere like this at this time of night. Also, we don't know what's going on inside. We'll have to go inside. Yeah. Yanagi slipped out of the shadows and headed for the concert club. I jogged behind him. Nervously, I watched Janagi as he reached for the door to the concert club. Huh? Just then, the door opened from the inside, and a young man came out. I only got a small glimpse of what the inside of the building looked like. Who are you? It's awfully late. Do you need something? When we had been trying to look inside, then a man who had exited the building spoke to us. It was natural that he'd be wondering why strangers would be at the door at this hour. Um, I'm Kazuki Hoshino's sister. My name is Ichika. Huh? My brother snuck out of the house a bit ago. I think he came here. Oh, you're Kazuki's big sister. Ah, I remember Akito mentioning that Kazuki had a sister. Not only Kazuki, but Akito comes here as well? Well, what about you? I'm just her escort. A woman shouldn't be out late by herself. Sure, that makes sense. Um, what does my brother do while he's here? Would you mind telling me your name? Hmm? He really didn't tell you anything, huh? Huh? Yasuhiro Ishiki. Nice to meet you. I'm in the same band as Kazuki. Ah, I see. Thank you for taking care of my brother. He introduced himself more politely than I expected so I returned his politeness. But Yasuhiro Ishiki? I feel like I've heard that name before. Yasuhiro Ishiki. Yanagi muttered the name and narrowed his eyes. Maybe he knew the name too. Yeah, and he actually remembers it apparently. No, I have to think of Kazuki now. 
Um, may I go inside? You're in the same band, so I assume that he's practicing. Kazuki is still in high school. It worries me when he goes out this late. The city is especially dangerous lately. Kazuki is practicing hard for an upcoming show. He wants to get all the practice that he can. He's concentrating now, so please let him be. A concert? This was the first time I'd heard that Kazuki was in a band and that he played in concerts. I had a mountain of questions, so I couldn't just ignore this. But I couldn't think of what to say. But it isn't good for you to bring a minor here this late at night. Yanagi, who had kept quiet, rescued me from sinking into the awkward silence. If something happens to him, you'd be the one held responsible. You might want to be a little more careful. <laughs> you talk like a cop, man. But the real cops wouldn't come by even if a cop reported that to them. Besides, even if they did show up, it'd just sour Kazuki's opinion of his sister. <sighs> He's probably going to be stubborn about it. I think you should let it go. That's... Hmm? Did he see us? Ishiki, the door's wide open. What do you... Gah! Don't you gah me like I'm some kind of monster. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Kazuki... You followed me? You're the worst. I hope you didn't say anything weird to Ishiki. How was I not supposed to be worried about you sneaking out this late at night? Worried? What are you talking about? Shut up. I'm not some child you need to worry about. Yes, you are. You're my little bro. But I told you yesterday that another murder just happened, so it's dangerous. I told you to shut up! <laughs> I jumped in shock as he suddenly raised his voice. Kazuki had violently pounded his fist against the door of the concert club. Kazuki! Ishiki, who was frowning slightly, approached Kazuki's trembling fist. He suddenly stopped. Kazuki relaxed and lowered his hand. What's your problem? All this time you've never given a crap about me. But now you're trying to play big sister. Is this all to make yourself feel better? You won't rest easy unless you do all this. It makes me sick to see all that superficial concern coming from you. Kazuki stormed back into the building. I watched him leave in shock. I was utterly speechless. I never knew he hated me this much. Miss, Kazuki is working really hard. I know you're worried about him, but could you just watch over him from more of a distance for now? Mr. Ishiki... You mentioned the concert. Is he practicing for that? Yeah, it's coming up soon. Kazuki is really getting into it. He's putting all his heart into his music. I know he genuinely wants to play good music. I'm really pulling for him. Kazuki, really? Yeah. <sighs> I didn't know that. I hadn't even tried to find out. I really don't know anything about my brother. Well, it's kind of hard to know if they don't say anything at all. If they don't even try. Maybe it made sense that Kazuki would hate me so much. At this rate, he won't come home unless we resort to drastic measures. Yanagi. That's probably not the best course, right? He'll just leave again another time. Yeah, but... I'm a little relieved. Huh? Akito's told me a bit about you. He said that you didn't get along with Kazuki. Uh... Kazuki's passion for music is ardent. But I'm sure that isn't all to it. What do you mean? I have a feeling that he's throwing himself into it because... He wants someone to notice him. I can see that he's always anxious, whether it's frustration or self-pity. He's practically radiating with that emotion. This is just my theory, but maybe the person Kazuki actually wants to acknowledge him is you. Me? You're worried about Kazuki. I... I don't think you're a bad person. So, I'm just relieved to learn about you. Just watch over him for now. Mr. Ishiki. Sorry, I'll make sure he gets home in the morning. <sighs> See ya. Well, he'll be safe as long as they're watching him. The door finally closed. What now? Maybe we shouldn't press the issue. Good evening. Huh? 
A voice greeted me from behind. It was a disturbingly cheerful voice. G good evening? Yeah, I, I imagine that in Yanagi's route we'd see everybody from all the storylines. Who are you? What are you doing here this late? I turned around to see a strangely dressed girl. Was she cosplaying? I should be asking you that. It isn't safe to be loitering at this hour. Hana is just on a walk, you know. And then, I thought I saw a couple having a lover spat. Curiosity got the better of Hana. Oh, um... We're just on an evening stroll. Don't mind us. We happened to spot this club, so we were curious about what was going on. We just swung by to take a look. I suppose curiosity got the better of us as well. Hmm? Oh, really? So, are they having a concert? No, it sounds like they're just practicing for an upcoming show. Oh, I knew it. Hana really loves the concerts at this place. They're totally amazing. Mister, you'd probably be blown away by them. I see. Look, it's great that you enjoy their shows, but it really is dangerous for you to be out this late. Okay. You're nice, mister. Good night. Then the girl swiftly departed. Phew. You lied to her, Yanagi? I didn't want to tell her what we were doing. Things could have gotten out of hand. That's true. No. As far as what we should do, we can't just stay here all night. Yeah, speaking of tomorrow, I have to go to work. If an emergency call came in, I'd have to head in immediately, no matter the time. It wasn't feasible to wait for Kazuki, and even if I did, there was a chance that he wouldn't come straight home anyway. Alright, I have an idea. Yes? Yanagi suddenly turned around, as if possessed by a good idea. He spoke to the empty air. Okazaki, you there? Oh, God. <laughs> huh? He just knows. Hmm? What's up, Yanagi? I love this. He's just always there. It's just between Yanagi and Ichika. So if we're together, then it's a sure thing that he's there, right? Eh? Eh? For some reason, Okazaki was really there. He was wearing his standard innocent grin. Where did you come from? I saw Yanagi leave the office in a hurry, so I figured something was wrong. Whoa, you really are a ghost. In other words, you followed Yanagi, but you didn't seem to think you did anything creepy. <laughs> oh, shucks. It wasn't a compliment. So, Okazaki, you came all this way, so I have a job for you to do. Huh? Okazaki blinked. Um, so basically, you want me to just stay here? Exactly. <laughs> I was grateful for Yanagi's quick thinking. Yanagi explained the situation to Okazaki and asked him to watch over Kazuki. Have you forgotten something, Yanagi? My job is to guard you. Yoshinori's at the office. Plus, it isn't that far from here anyway. I'm not so weak that I need your protection. Sasazuka's a different story. Well, that's true. I prefer to protect the kitty cat anyway. Ah, uh, I guess I probably shouldn't call you that anymore. Right, Ichika Hoshino? I'm sorry for hiding it from you. I knew he had figured me out. I had even been prepared for this eventuality. Now that I've been confronted with it, there was no point in hiding my identity. I'm sure you know, but I'm Ichika Hoshino of the Shinjuku Station Special Regions Crime Prevention Office. I hate saying that whole thing every time. But I can't tell you my situation. Is it related to work? Why don't you just tell me? I just told you I can't tell you. All right. Can I call you Ichika? I uh, I don't mind. What's Yanagi going to say about this? Oh, I doesn't care. Okazaki was so carefree. He showed no apparent intention of investigating me. Um, it's very nice to meet you again. I'm very sorry about my brother. I'm terribly sorry to lay this on you while you're working a mission. But could you please help me? It's hard for me to say no if you need my help that badly. Hmm. After I pleaded with him, Okazaki seemed to be seriously considering my request. Hmm. <sighs> While pondering the request, Okazaki looked at Yanagi. <sighs> Yanagi had said all he was going to say, so he broke eye contact and looked up at the sky. 
Why do I feel like he's snubbing me here? Okazaki sighed. Okay, I get it. I'll help you. Really? Under one condition. A condition? What's that? I'm afraid to ask. Could I get your phone number? Er, oh, um, we should all we should all have each other's phone numbers anyway. You never know when it could be useful to coordinate. I shifted my weight and then easily looked over at Yanagi. It's just contact info. Why not? You guys should have each other's numbers too. <laughs> Yay! I got your dad's blessing. <laughs> Yanagi's not my dad. I'm not her dad. Oh god. That was adorable. I want you to tell me all kinds of fun things, okay? Uh, okay. Within reasonable limits. His friendly smile made me lower my guard a little bit. He may be trying to pry into my situation. Okazaki's awfully passionate about his job. I'm so happy. You owe me a big favor now too, Yanagi. Not because I wanted to. Well, there's no helping it. Yep. Oh, I charge a lot of interest. So, watch out. Anyway, we'll leave this to you. We're heading back. With that, Yanagi turned to leave. Okay, I'll let you know if anything happens. Thank you, Okazaki. Sure, just leave your brother to me. I bowed to him while I was nonchalantly waving goodbye, and then followed Yanagi. I'd like to see how Kay gets along with my brother. We had left Okazaki to handle things here. We walked through the darkness of Shinjuku. I wonder if that was okay. Hmm? What? Asking Okazaki to do that. As Okazaki had stated, his real job was to protect Yanagi's team. I was worried that he might not properly look after Kazaki, but that wasn't all. But oh, come on, he has his pride. Was it really okay for him to abandon his job? The thought troubled me. Oh, don't worry about that at all. Trust me. Yanagi slightly soothed my worries. Once he takes a job, he'll see it through. He acts flaky, but he's very diligent. In fact, he's so persistent that it's hard to compromise with him most of the time. Meticulous. Stubborn. Okazaki seems so carefree. I had trouble imagining him as a hard-working employee. Like he said, it's a facade, and it's part of his tool to be stubborn. To just to pretend to be all cute and clingy, but he's really just being stubborn. Yanagi, you seem to know a surprising amount about Okazaki. Yeah, what's your history here? I investigated him. Oh, I see. I suppose if he's observing you, then you would want to know about him. It's pretty tough to find info on SP officers. Even Sasazuka could only dig up basic information on him. From the way he diligently sticks us out 24-7, you can tell what type of guy he is, even without looking him up. Indeed. No matter how often we run him off, he gets into the office. Sometimes just to chat with Enomoto. <laughs> when Enomoto doesn't even want to chat with him. And the face he's making. I love the faces they make in these conversations. I can totally imagine that. We've had enough unwanted contact with him to construct a full psyche profile. We know he takes his work seriously. When he said it so plainly, it gave me a feeling of security. Besides, the fact that he accepted the job means that he stands to gain from it. He isn't the kind of person who can have the goodness of his heart taken advantage of, so you still need to watch out around him. R right So he took it on just for the favor? Yanagi has an impressively thorough understanding of Okazaki. Cause he's a good detective. That might explain why he didn't try and throw off his Miss Sanders, even though he knew that he was under police surveillance. He currently works for the police, so we can easily take action if trouble arises. SP officers are good at avoiding attention. A normal cop would raise Ishiki's guard. Ah. Then I remembered something. I thought I heard the name Ishiki before, and the hostile attitude he seemed to have toward the police. That, that's right. I think I've heard that name before. Hmm? A few days ago, I was trying to memorize a mountain of X-Day files. His name was in them. Yasuhiro Ishiki. He's related to the May X-Day case. Yeah, you're right. 
Yanagi had probably recognized the name right away once he heard it. Yasuhiro Ishiki. He was one of the people mistakenly arrested by the officers who were victims in the May incident. He was under suspicion of being one of the perpetrators in May, motivated by revenge. For a moment, anyway. He had a perfect alibi, so he was immediately released. But... Even if he wasn't the suspect, it meant that someone tied to X-Day was also tied to Kazuki. The reality of that hit me, and I grew even more anxious. It felt as if the chance of Kazuki getting entangled in an X-Day case had skyrocketed. Ah, oh, it's like you just can't avoid it. December 9th, 1.10pm Huh... I attempted to stifle a yawn with my open palm. In the end, I didn't get any sleep at all. Yes, you've reached the SRCPO. Um, there's a suspicious car that's been parked in front of my house since yesterday. Nobody's inside, but it's kind of creepy. If you have time to send a patrol out, I'd like it if someone could take a look. Understood. Please tell us your address. We'll send a team to investigate immediately. Oh, you're coming? Thanks. Um, my address is... While taking report after report, my mind wandered back to the events of this morning. After that, Okazaki had given us real-time updates on Kazuki until he returned home. I was impressed. He even sent photos. Okazaki really is meticulous. Yeah. It's like hiring a private detective. I was relieved to see him get home, and I gratefully thanked Okazaki. But it was time to get to work, so I never got to see my brother after that. Phew! Hey, Hoshino. You don't look so good. That's what lack of sleep does to ya. Like to me, doing these videos. Huh? Really? Don't give me that. Go look in the mirror. Go ahead and take your lunch break now. Y yes sir Thank you. Um, X-Day Files. I used my break to read over the X-Day Files some more. Maybe you should take a nap instead. I had asked Sakurogawa to forward me files on each crime scene, but there just wasn't enough information. I was hoping to dig a little deeper. My increased motivation stemmed from last night, of course. Actually, we'll go ahead and check out what we do with our increased motivation in the next episode. I think it'll be a good place to stop. Not getting into anything heavy at the moment. Oh yeah, I feel like Yanagi's route could be actually like double everybody else's routes. <laughs> but we'll see. He totally is the dad of the group, man. I think he'll loosen up as the route goes along, though. They've done quite a bit of foreshadowing, so I can see certain things happening, and yeah, this is going to get interesting, all right. Well, anyway, hope to see you all in the next video, and I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.